This all happened around the Thanksgiving of 2022. I was going through a divorce from my husband at the time. We'll call him Thomas. We'd been together for a little over 12 years by then. Our marriage started out well, but unfortunately, we were still living in the same house until the divorce was finalized. Thomas refused to leave until it was finished, so I was unable to evict him from the house due to state laws. It was a pretty miserable situation and uncomfortable as hell at home. It got to the point where I always felt sick. Really, it had been bad for the past few years. It was a nightmare being married to Thomas. He had completely changed from the man I met all those years ago into a total control freak. He was emotionally and physically a and he had extreme anger issues. If he didn't get his way, he would completely flip out like a toddler. Out of nowhere, he would start screaming and yelling and throwing things. Thomas, do you mind cleaning up after yourself? Shut up! You can't say that to me! This is my house! When you start getting down on your knees more often, then we'll talk! You hear me? It was honestly unsettling to see a grown man behave like he did. He would get so angry over the smallest things. Sometimes I wouldn't even have to say anything for him to blow up at me. So I was finally divorcing him. But ever since I filed, Thomas had been acting even more unhinged. He didn't agree with the divorce at all and didn't want to lose control over me. I started to notice him intentionally messing the house up, like leaving food and dishes all over the place. Then he would yell at me for the house not being clean. He did anything he could to get under my skin. So every day, I waited for the divorce to be finalized, counting down the days. I stayed in my room whenever I was home and only ever left when I needed to. I avoided Thomas as much as I possibly could for my own sanity's sake. He was terrible. Every night I would hear him yelling and talking to himself until really late. I didn't know if he had become an alcoholic or if he had just gone psycho. Whenever he was at work, I would cook and eat and try to do everything before he got home. I didn't want to see him for one second. It was like that every day. It really started to wear on me. I felt very ill and unhealthy, and I would throw up on a daily basis. I started to become afraid that Thomas would do something awful, so I placed ring cameras all over the house, just in case he snapped. I wanted to have evidence to use against him. It was that bad. This all went on for months. I never had anything to look forward to. So when it was close to Thanksgiving, I decided I wasn't going to let Thomas ruin that for me too. I invited my family to come over for the holiday at a time when I knew Thomas would be gone. When he went to work the next day before Thanksgiving, I cooked pies, turkey, and a bunch of other food to prepare for the meal the next day. I worried that I wouldn't have enough time to finish all of it before he got home, but I managed it just in time. I rushed to my room just as I heard the front door unlocking. I was relieved to get all the food ready just before he got home. I looked forward to the next day all evening until I finally went to bed. Then, at around 5 in the morning on Thanksgiving Day, I was awakened by a noise. I didn't know what it was at first, so I listened for it again. There was tussling sounds coming from downstairs, like someone was moving around. It seemed like it had to be Thomas because there was no one else in the house. The more I listened, the more I was sure that he was doing something down there. I was alarmed by this as he was usually asleep at this time. I knew whatever Thomas had going on at 5 a.m. had to be sketchy, so I decided to see what he was up to. I got out of bed as quietly as I could and slowly crept downstairs, keeping all the lights off. I didn't want him to know that I was awake. There was no telling what he might do if he caught me spying on him. When I made it downstairs, I was surprised to see all the lights were off in the living room and kitchen. It was completely dark. I figured I must have imagined the noises and that Thomas really was asleep in his room. I didn't see why he would be walking around in the dark. I turned on the kitchen light to see if anything looked suspicious. And when I turned around, I saw Thomas sitting in the living room in the darkness, staring at me. I screamed and ran upstairs, scared out of my mind. I made it to my room and immediately locked the door behind me. I didn't know what he was up to, but I was terrified. I knew that it had something to do with me. Then I remembered the ring cameras. I checked the footage and saw Thomas doing something very suspicious with my Thanksgiving pies. I couldn't fully tell what he was doing, but it looked like he was adding something to them from his pocket. I texted my family about it and they told me to stay in my room until he left. So I waited a few hours, horrified that he might break down my door at any moment. But a few hours later, He finally left for work. I then took the pies down to the police station and filed a report. It was determined that the pies had been laced with some sort of poison. I tried to get the police to arrest Thomas, but they said I didn't have enough evidence. No matter how many times I called them, nothing ever happened. I confronted Thomas about poisoning the pies, but he of course denied everything. He told me that I was losing my mind. 
I didn't feel safe at home anymore, so I eventually left and stayed in a hotel. It wasn't until we were finally divorced a few months later that I felt safe again. I fully believe the reason I felt ill all this time was because Thomas was poisoning me. I'm just lucky that he never used a killing dose. This story was inspired by horrific hidden camera footage of a man who allegedly tried to poison his ex-wife by lacing her Thanksgiving pies. A Michigan woman named Sarah revealed that her ring camera may have saved her from a health crisis after she caught the ex-husband in the act. In the video, the ex-husband can be seen lurking around the kitchen. After he checked that no one was around, he grabbed something from his pocket and poured it all over the Thanksgiving pies. The woman explained that this incident happened around 5 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day. She was shocked to see him do this even though they weren't together at the time. The woman then took the pies to the police the next morning to make a report. However, the woman claims that the police didn't help her and denied her numerous times in the past. Sure, you know where we're going? <sighs> For the millionth time, yes, I know where it is. I've been there before. Jeez, I was just making sure. It just feels like we're going nowhere. We're not going nowhere. We're going to the middle of nowhere, which is just one more thing that makes this house the perfect hit. The nearest police station is 20 miles away, even if there's a new security system installed. Wait, there might be a security system? I don't know. Maybe? But who cares? I, I told you it doesn't matter. Nick. I don't think it's a good idea to hit the same house twice, especially so Relax, soon. Relax, Heather. No one ever expects to get robbed twice in one year. Besides, this place is worth the risk. Ugh, I just don't feel like taking any risks right now. It's Thanksgiving. Can't we just have a feast with our family like normal people? <sighs> just hurry the hell up. You drive like grandma. I I'm I'm just on edge, okay? I, I promise you. There's only one guy living there. He's an old army vet from Nam or Korea or something like that. As far as I can tell his wife kicked the bucket years ago, and his kids never come around. Wait, wait, he's a vet? Like, a veteran? This guy could be armed to the team! Relax, he's old. Did you forget that I already robbed this guy? I even got sloppy and the guy never even woke up. I didn't even get to the bedroom, to the basement. Oh, Nick, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I mean, doesn't this make us bad people, just robbing an old veteran on Thanksgiving? Jeez, when did you go soft? Have you forgotten why we do this? Let me remind you. Nick, Nick, stop it. <laughs> hey, stop it! Let me drive! Come on, cousin. Don't you like fancy jewels? Or are you more of a cold hard cash girl? Shut up! Why do you even keep that in the car? What do you think would happen if we got pulled over? Can't you smell it? Stop it, Nicholas! I'm serious! Get your hands out of my face before I crash! <laughs> And we're here. What? Yeah, pretty lucky you stopped right here, huh? It's time. Get your head in the game. Right. Hurry up and put these on. The guy is definitely asleep by now, but keep quiet. I'll go in through the window and let you in through the door. Got it. All set. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. I'm going to the basement to look for the safe. You stay up here. Okay. It's 
far too late for that, Missy. Why don't you stay for dinner? Don't you know it's Thanksgiving? <sighs> Screw you! Now, just where do you think you're going? Away from you! Anywhere but here, you monster! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one who invited myself in. How about you show a little respect, huh? <laughs> just leave me alone! Leave you alone? That's exactly what you punk should have done for me. Although, I guess I ought to say thanks to you two for letting me practice the skills I never thought I'd get to use again. No! <laughs> no! Get away! Get away! <laughs> This story was inspired by a disturbing case that happened on the Thanksgiving of 2012. Two individuals named Haley Kiefer and her cousin Nicholas Brady broke into the home of a 64-year-old man named Byron David Smith. The incident took place in Little Falls, Minnesota. Smith took out the separately and 10 minutes apart as they entered the basement where he was, later stating to police he was worried about them being armed. Smith could be heard in the videotape taunting the victims, saying stuff like, I don't see them as human, I see them as vermin. The day after, Smith would keep the victims' bodies in the closet. On April 29, 2014, he was found guilty for his actions. The case sparked debate over the Castle Doctrine, which allows homeowners to defend their home with lethal force. The prosecution alleged that Smith's actions in recording the incidents unfolding showed premeditation and that he used excessive force after having neutralized the threat. He was convicted by a jury and sentenced to life in prison since. Every year as it gets closer to Thanksgiving, I'm reminded of what happened all those years ago. It was easily the most horrific experience of my life, but it all started out so normal. There was no way to see it coming. I still don't fully know where it all went wrong. Decades ago, back when I was still pretty young, I lived near my family in Ohio. It was just a few days before Thanksgiving and we all headed over to my Aunt Martha and Uncle Albert's house for a customary Thanksgiving dinner. Aunt Martha loved to host big family events, especially Thanksgiving. She and Uncle Albert would always cook multiple turkeys and whip out a ton of sides and desserts for the occasion. They would invite everyone over for a huge party, and every family member who could make it would be there. There were cousins, grandparents, aunts, uncles, nephews, and nieces. It was incredibly chaotic and crowded. That year, though, was different. Unfortunately, Uncle Albert had passed away earlier that year. Aunt Martha took it really hard. She had been a manic wreck ever since the funeral. Everyone tried to comfort her, especially me and my family, since we lived the closest, but she was inconsolable. Every night, Aunt Martha would wail and cry and act incredibly erratic. It was difficult to be around her, but we tried to do what we could. We all felt sorry for her. Then it all changed. A few months after Albert's funeral, Aunt Martha announced that she had found a new companion, a man named Derek. We were all surprised that she would date someone so soon after her husband had passed, but we were happy that she had decided to move on. That is, until we met the guy. I got a really bad feeling about him as soon as I laid eyes on him. He looked really sketchy, and everyone who spoke to him could tell he was no good. He acted like a jerk to everyone in the family. Plus, he was very abusive and he took advantage of Martha. She started acting even crazier once he was around. It was terrible. None of us could recognize her anymore. She barely wanted anything to do with us. My parents tried to convince her to leave Derek once, but she immediately refused and went ape shit on them. No, you just want me to die alone, you little selfish! No one could convince her otherwise, despite the things that we all had heard about him. So this is what was going on when we headed to Aunt Martha's house for Thanksgiving. None of us could believe it when she said that she still wanted to host. We all assumed that with Albert gone and the way she had been acting, it was never going to happen. Aunt Martha insisted though. She said she always hosted Thanksgiving and that was never going to change. I really wasn't looking forward to it. I begged my mom to make up an excuse not to attend. Mom, it's going to be awkward there. Aunt Martha is basically insane and none of us can even stand Derek. It's going to be hell. But she insisted we go. We all put our feelings aside and went to Martha's event, hoping that it wouldn't be a disaster. When we got there, I was surprised by how many others had shown up. 
It was pretty much the same people as always. The whole family had made the trip. That made me feel a lot better, and I started to think that the whole night wouldn't be that bad. Of course, I was wrong. It was incredibly awkward right from the beginning. No one in the family liked Derek, and no one was doing a good job of hiding it. On top of that, Aunt Martha seemed even crazier than the last time I'd seen her. She barely spoke to anyone, and she seemed incredibly nervous about something. When we all finally sat down to dinner, I didn't eat a thing. I was too uncomfortable. I just wanted to get the hell out of there. As everyone else ate, they all tried to make conversation, but it was short and tense. There was none of the joy and holiday cheer like there had been when Albert was still around. There was just a lot of awkward stares and short sentences. This went on for several minutes. I stared at the table in front of me and didn't say anything, feeling completely miserable. Then, I glanced over at Aunt Martha to see how she was doing. She actually looked a lot happier but something about her made me feel uneasy. She had the strangest smile on her face. It was really creepy and unnatural. I had the weirdest feeling that she was waiting for something to happen, but before I could think about it anymore, everything went to shit. Everyone at the table started choking on their food. One of my cousins fell out of their chair and frantically clawed at their throat. Their eyes rolled into the back of their head. People started vomiting left and right and going apeshit. It was like a zombie apocalypse. Everywhere I looked, one of my family members was choking or throwing up. Everyone was screaming and gasping for air while they rolled around on the floor. Several people simply passed out right onto the table. I couldn't grasp what was happening. My whole family was going insane. I was panicked and disoriented, but I still managed to call 911. Hello? Please send help! I think my family is poisoned! Help! Everyone was immediately taken to the hospital. My grandmother and two others in the family died not long after. Everyone else was incredibly ill and in urgent care. The doctors told us it was rat poison. I mentioned my suspicions about Aunt Martha to the cops and they arrested her for questioning. She claimed that she was retaliating against the family and blamed it on her being mentally ill, along with saying her new companion Derek forced her to do it. Unfortunately, the real reason was a lot darker. Ever since her husband's death, Martha had become obsessed with attending funerals, no matter who died. She somehow got a high off of going to funerals and poisoned everyone with the hopes that she would be able to go to multiple. I've been traumatized during Thanksgiving ever since. I don't even celebrate it anymore. With the memory of that night still in my mind, there doesn't seem to be much to be thankful for. The story was inspired by a Thanksgiving case regarding a woman named Martha Wise. On the evening of Thanksgiving, Several members of the family, including Martha's mother Sophie, fell ill with a severe stomach ailment. The others recovered shortly, but the mother's illness worsened, which resulted in her passing away around Christmas time. But things got even worse around New Year's Eve, when Martha's husband Fred and several of their younger family members all began suffering stomach pain similar to what Sophie had experienced before her death. Several family members were hospitalized, and two others died shortly after. In total, 17 relatives were taken ill with similar symptoms, leaving some partially paralyzed from the mysterious illness. It was later revealed that Martha had poisoned her family on Thanksgiving and onwards, and blamed it on being mentally ill and that her new lover had ordered her to poison her family. It turns out that she had developed a sick obsession with attending funerals after her first husband died. 